Ezra chapter 15, okay? Second Ezra chapter 15. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. I've written about three papers so far. One of them has came to pass. Okay? One of them has came to pass. So I'm just letting you guys know, um, you know, things are going to start coming together, okay? Things are going to start coming together. Um, let's go down to verse uh, verse 3. It says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Fear not the imaginations against thee. So, so what I was supposed to be doing yesterday, you know, when that, that man was coming against me with a rock, okay? I was not to fear what he was going to do with that rock against me, okay? So that's what it's speaking about. When, when these times come, don't fear what people can do to you, okay? The Bible says, you know, don't fear what man can do to the flesh, okay? But fear the Most High, because He can destroy both flesh and soul and hell fire, okay? So let's keep going. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredibly of them trouble thee, for that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring thee plagues upon the world. Uncle, we think it's Satan. Okay, go play on, go play with toys for just a few minutes, okay? I can go grab my phone for a few minutes. Hold on, go play with toys or something. Sorry about that. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. For weak, wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their their hurtful works are fulfilled therefore said the lord i will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness they are profanely committed neither and i will suffer them in the in those things which in which they will wickedly exercise themselves behold the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. Verse 9, it says, And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among the men. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretch them out, stretch out, our arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and destroy all the land thereof. Okay, so when it's speaking about Egypt, okay, it's speaking about the word bondage. Okay, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, so America, United States, okay, Mystery Babylon. Okay, this is God's uh, God's chosen people. This is our last captivity. Okay, this is our last bondage before we run back into our land okay this is our last captivity okay and you guys notice okay when egypt was there when when um in the time when the, the israelites were over there in egypt that place was so beautiful okay there were palm trees and greens and all that stuff all around over there okay and as they left now it's all desolate Okay, when God's chosen people leave America, America is going to be desolate. Okay, America is going to be desolate. Right? Let's uh, read uh, verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So, did you guys hear that? I will smite and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Okay, so that means it's coming again. Okay, but our Egypt captivity is over here in America. That's why God's chosen people are over here in America today. Okay, and just as it says, you know, there in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse uh, 68. Okay, I will send thee into uh, again with ships again. So that means it happened more than once. Okay, it's going to happen more than once. 
as before, and, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague, and it shall be and punishment that God shall bring upon it. The verse 13 it says, And they until the ground shall mourn, for the seed shall fail through the blasting and the hail, and with the fearful consultation, woe to the world and them that are, that are dwelt therein. For the sword and their destruction draws nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. Okay, swords in their hands. So today, when we're speaking about swords today, it's speaking about uh, guns and, and so forth. Okay, verse 16 says, For there shall be sedition among the men and invading one another. Okay, so it's speaking about rioting in the streets, uh, people evading one another. Okay, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Okay, verse 17 A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Why are there men going to be afraid? Because most of them have turned feminine. Okay? Most of the men here in America, okay? Now, I, I wouldn't say most of them, okay? But a good population of the men here in America are gay. Okay? They're going to be running around screaming. They're going to be like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Okay, that's what's going to be happening. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, so the lack of food. And for great tribulation, verse 20, behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth and remnants me which are from the rising of the sun from the south, from the east, and to the limitless, limitless turn themselves one against another and repay the thing that they have done to them. Okay? So the Most High is going to have all the Gentile nations turn against each other for what they have done to God's chosen people. Okay? Verse uh, 21, it says, Like as they, as they do yet this day, okay? Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, okay? So that's speaking about present tense. So I will do also and recompense in their bosom, saith the Lord, their, the Lord God. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. Uh-oh. Do you guys hear that? My right hand. Okay, my right hand shall not spare the sinners. And that is in 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not cause them to, shall not seize over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Okay, so you guys heard that saying, right? If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Okay, if you live by the gun... You're going to die by the gun. Okay? Verse 23, The fire is gone forth from this wrath and hath consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners and like the straw that is enkindled. Woe well unto them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Ooh, do you guys hear that one? Verse 24, Woe well unto them that sin and keep not my commandments. So that's what the, the Christian church today, the pagan Christian church today is promoting, okay? They are promoting sin, transgression against the law. And these pastors and these churches are not talking about the law, saying, oh, it's okay to eat swine. It's okay to eat shrimp, crab, and, and lobster, okay? Those, those animals were made to cleanse the, the, the seas, to purify the water so that we are able to drink it. Okay, same with the pig. Okay, I know everybody out there loves bacon, right? Everybody out there loves pork chops, right? Everybody out there loves, just, just loves sausage, uh, pig in a blanket, uh, biscuits and gravy, 
okay? That's why these grocery stores and these, these fast food restaurants are promoting bacon because they know that that's sin, that they know that it's sin and that's what can cause God's people to fall, okay? Is this starting to make sense to most of you guys? Okay. I will spare not them. You go your way. You children of the power, defile not my sanctuary. Okay. So you guys can keep on reading 2 Ezra chapter 15. Okay. But we're going to jump over to uh, verse 39. We're going to jump over to verse uh, 49. Okay. So this is speaking about World War Three right here. Okay. So this is going on. The, all the the um, the chess pieces are lined up around it uh, um, are lined over there in the Middle East. Okay, everybody's surrounding Iran. Okay, everybody's surrounding different parts of the the um, all that information that's out there. Okay, so let's go to Second Ezra chapter fifteen, and we're going to go to verse thirty nine. So this is speaking about World War Three. Okay. And it says here, and strong winds shall arise from the east. Okay? Strong winds shall arise from the east. So the winds over there in the Middle East. Okay? And shall open it in the cloud, which he shall raise up in his wrath. Okay? So it, it, it's the same similar precept that's going on over there in um, Ezekiel 38. Okay? Open it. And